friends, it's Amanda May with Art of Design. We're here to talk about counted cross stitch this week and I'm so excited to be here today. This is my 10th floss tube episode and it's officially autumn outside. <laughs> here, up, here in North America, the days are getting a little shorter so the fake lights are coming out to, uh, to, out to play. It's been raining for the last couple days here in Maryland so I guess that's just how it's going to be. I have my little Raji pug here with me and we're in a different location today. This is my little Raji pug. Oh, and he's tired. He says, mommy, don't wake me up. Here's Raji. Hi, baby. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? He's, uh, he's my little senior pug. You was snorting for everyone? Hmm? Hmm? All right, well, I'm so excited to be here. I've had a very interesting week. <laughs> my brakes decided to give up the ghost and so my car has been in the shop and I had to transfer over everything and my husband's like well what's wrong why are you upset I go I forgot all my save the stitches in the trunk and he goes you didn't forget we'll still go back and get them so we went back to the auto body shop and I got all the goodies to show you this week and I'm so excited okay so what we're gonna do we're gonna do questions and answers we're gonna do save the stitches, questions and answers. I wanna thank everyone for your fantastic responses to my video last week, talking about the pineapple crochet chair goodies, and I was able to do some research on the depression era crochet, so thank you all so much. Thank you all for telling me what a chicken egg cozy was, and I made my own little dough bowl. Look at this. I made a little dough bowl with the chicken koozie, her cozy. I can fit two artificial eggs in there and then I put some leaves. This is a hand turned bowl that I received as a gift. So I officially have my little chicken out to play. <laughs> I love it so much, thank you all. I went on Pinterest and just had so much fun looking at all the different patterns. I don't crochet. I have tried and failed miserably. <laughs> so it was so nice to see and I ended up pinning, actually found this pattern that's a free pattern available. So I was able to really just have so much fun looking. So thank you all again for letting me know. As I said before, I'm a lifelong learner. I love, love, love to learn about all this stuff. And I, I really appreciate the community for coming out and telling me what's what and telling me about the uh, chicken scratch embroidery. I didn't realize that stitching the X's on gingham was called chicken scratch. So thank you again. All right, so my next question is, what software programs do I use to design cross stitch patterns? Well, I actually have two that I use. I am an iOS Apple user, which means that I am on an iPad Pro and I'm on a Mac desktop computer. I also have a PC computer, but that's purely for my eBay store and printing shipping labels and stuff. I'm not really a Windows person. Once you go Mac, you never go back. Sorry, inside joke because um, my last name is starts with M-A-C, so. Anywho, okay. I use Mac Stitch on desktop and I love it. There are some drawbacks to it. It is a software program through Ursa or Ursula. It's not Ursula, U-R-S-A. I'll, I'll put it down below. I'm not affiliated with them in any way other than enjoying their product. I purchased it at the end of 2015 with their unlimited update option. So I, uh, when new updates roll out, I'm able to update to meet the, the times. It is a software program based out of the UK. So any, any DMC threads or threads that are available in the United States but not available in, in Europe or the UK, um, they, it's not showing up. For instance, like DMC 3839, I believe, or anyway, it's one of those threads. It had come in a sample pack and a, it's not allowed in the UK. It's a US only based dye lot. So it's not showing up in the program. Also, 
I've noticed that inputting different colors and symbols for fancy flosses, I, I'm having to do that a lot because it's not updating as quickly as possible. But the program is fantastic as far as being able to save motifs, work larger projects. I, I've started, I would say I have close to 100 projects started on Mac Stitch Design. And I've noticed that with drafting, I can start the pattern. If I don't like it, I can save a section of it as a motif and then put it into a design later. I, I really like that feature. You just have to stay really organized with your motifs and what you're calling them and understand that if you save it in one color palette, when you change it over to your new software or to your new document, the color palette might not be the same. So then you might have to change your colors well, that might be tricky if you have two different symbols for the same color. So it does take some time to learn the program and to get the logistics kind of worked out. iPad version of the cross stitch design software that I'm using is not compatible with Mac Stitch. So if I am creating anything on the go, it is reserved to that specific program, which I find to be a huge limitation. Also, the developer is out of Southeast Asia, so there is not only a language discrepancy and a difference in formatting and setting things up, everything's metric versus us, you know, Americans and our inches. The great thing about the iPad software is I can use it anytime if I have an idea I can pull out my Apple pencil or you can use an equivalent stylus and you're able to chart right there. There are significant limitations to the software program so it's not something that I'm doing large-scale projects with but I have been able to really work on my Christmas ornaments and my Christmas Christmas ornament series and I'm so excited about that which I'm gonna premiere today in this video so I will link the below the other software program that I am using save the stitches time I had an excellent time doing save the stitches I <laughs> ended up finding some awesome treasures just in time for my my brake shifter thing to go out where I couldn't move the car and it was a whole big ordeal. But I got some really awesome stuff. So behind me is this awesome applique piece on barn wood that I got that is just tremendous. So I'm gonna hang that in my craft room. Oh, so awesome. I got this piece here and it is dated 1995 by Linda and it's got a really neat button on it one of those three-dimensional buttons and oh, I just think it's really neat I love it to me these look like hollyhock but I could be mistaken as to what flower those are but I love the little garden gate and it, if anybody has gone to thrift stores antique stores sometimes you like have to be very insistent like let me wrap let me wrap the piece I don't want it to get damaged just just getting it outside of the store. So this piece, I they let me actually wrap it so I didn't just damage the button getting it out of the store. <laughs> so I was really excited about that. I got this little piece and it's professionally framed, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, New Hampshire, New, New Hampshire, Park the Car. I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I can't do the New England accent. I can do the coffee talk. You talk and drink coffee, but I, mm, no, I can't do that either. Okay, <laughs> but I love this little bird. I got this one, which is so quintessential 1980s. Look at this frame, country quilts, and it was made in 1989 to remember a fun little quilt day that they had together. I love that there's a note on it and professionally framed. I got this, it's pretty dirty. Again, professionally framed. When someone mentions quilting, I just go to pieces. I love it. Tis the season for Halloween and I was so excited to find these little doorknob hangers. 
They're gonna go in my house. This one, look at these little pumpkins. And I love the metallic thread. Then this one, I'm not, I don't like spiders, but an occasional design with a spider on it, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I also got these really fun little applique bats. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them yet, but I really like them. The next cross stitch piece I got is a welcome pineapple, very late 80s, early 90s. It's behind glass. And then this piece, I see I need to stretch it and clean it. Here, fishy, fishy. <laughs> I love kitty cats. I love them. I, uh, I wish I could have a cat, but I, I, uh, I'm, I have allergies to cats. What are you going to do? All right, I also did a little retail therapy on eBay this week, and I kind of got in a bidding war, like a little bit, like a little bit of a bidding war with somebody, but I was really excited. I couldn't believe I actually won the auction. I have this, this magazine, and I've sold the magazine before. Before I ever was a cross-stitcher, I had, I had, bought and sold this magazine and I'd always liked it and my husband liked it and so I ended up getting another copy of it and he goes then you you have to stitch it clearly you got the another magazine you've got to stitch it again well I'm just you know cruising through eBay looking at stuff and I saw a partially completed one and I said yep gotta have it look it's got the colonial knots or the the french knots the it's oh i love it i'm so excited so now i have i have it halfway finished and i can start working on it and get it done and and, and have my little beep maybe have the b piece up ready for next year the next piece i got i i, I did not get this piece online i i, I found this in the store and it is the Four Seasons, and someone had left the hoop on, so it's pretty. But I'm excited. I have, it came with, uh, they had bobbinated a lot of this stuff. Here's what it looks like completed. And, oh, it's just another another cool little piece. I don't know if I'll finish this one or what I'm gonna do with it, but I can't I can't leave these pieces behind. I it's time for pattern release time. I'm really excited. I want to show you a Christmas ornament and a Halloween ornament that I worked on, and a little bit of crafty goodness. The first or the first piece I have is Halloween slash bartender slash home bar themed and it's dark spirit brew with a dash of scream and sugar. I made it to kind of look like an old menu or it could be, I think turned into a bell pole. I attached it on to this really fun piece that I have. I have a, I have a bar at my house. Well, I have like a, a mid-century bar and I have it all decked out. So I have a lot of paraphernalia. I don't know the right word. A lot of drinking goodies. I don't, I don't know what to say. But anyway, I had this in my collection. There we go. This was in my collection and I thought that it would be a tremendous way of displaying this. It's got some fun little stitches. I put some bead work on it. It's got some variegated threads and I just had a lot of fun creating it. The next piece is my little crafty idea. I went to the dollar store and I got this really fun tray. And I thought, well, what could I do? And I ended up using the mat board and then uh, gluing it down a la 
the Twisted Stitcher tutorial. I'm gonna mount it here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna mount to have it something on the back you know so I can hang it and then I'm gonna put this and then I'm gonna try to do one of those like decorative picks so I can display this and I'm really excited about it I think it's so fun I got the fabric uh, in the remnant section of a big box store and went off season so I'd had this in my stash the tray from the dollar store the mat board from the dollar store the ribbon around my cross stitch piece here was also from the dollar store and then my fancy floss threads are from the wool and needlework store in Frederick Maryland and I also thought well maybe it'll be fun no, don't mount anything at all. Just leave the drink tray as is as display because I'm not drinking. I'm, I have a bar and I don't drink, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, and then setting it here with some other display items. We'll see. My next piece is a Christmas piece that I finished. I really liked Kitten Stitcher's kind of box tutorial. I got this it's okay this is not finished but I'm showing you you know real life here <laughs> I got this piece from it was in the patriotic sec section I got it on clearance this is a baby headband that I'm used using it right now as I'm gluing uh, the glue didn't set in time for the video so that's why that's there <laughs> But here's my little piece in its ornaments. It's got the metallic threads and then I've got fancy flosses. So this is part of one of the ornament collections. This is on 32 count r, &R reproduction linen. And the more I ironed it with the steam, with the padding, with everything, the more wrinkled it got. I stretched it, I left it for, I don't know, two weeks and I still, it's not perfect, but here we are. I love, I really, am, I'm really enjoying doing the Christmas ornaments and there I am. I am gonna debut a couple more ornaments, but they are in the digital simulation or digital rendering of the pattern. I haven't actually physically stitched them. I hope that you understand that a lot of us new designers, we have more ideas than we, than we can stitch or have time to stitch. So it's not that we're being lazy by doing the digital rendering, but I, I genuinely do not have time between being a small business owner, a mother, a woman, a wife, entrepreneur, artist, homeowner, digital video maker. Some days I sleep, you know, but it's, I want to get the patterns out and then they're not all model stitch so please forgive me all right I'm gonna stop making excuses let me show you what I have worked on so far uh, on my pumpkin pie sampler I am so close to finishing it I am I'm so excited she still is like disembodied head we've been watching a lot of scooby-doo <laughs> and there's a episode of the headless specter and we've only watched it like 87 times this week <laughs> Every time I look at her, all I can think of now is the episode of Scooby-Doo, The Headless Spectre. Anywho, there I am. I'm hoping to get it done and ready to display. So many awesome needlepoint resources. I just got this. The museum in Baltimore did an exhibit back in 2001. Tremendous exhibit pamphlet. I didn't even know it existed. I, I, I did some digging and some research and I pulled this up. I've been reading on it and it's on the, the handiwork of kind of Baltimore County, Carroll County and the historical influence of it. And I, I'm, I wanna reach out to some of the museums and see about seeing some of the stuff in the collection. There's so, there's so much stuff, amazing needlework, needle art, there's, oh, it's everywhere. I mean, we have Mr. X Stitch across the pond specializing, you know, he says he's the kingpin of contemporary embroidery. I've got so much history here in the mid-Atlantic New England uh, 
American history, indigenous history, African American history, all, it's amazing. So with every stitch, just know that you are a thread that's connecting historical needlework to contemporary needle art. I want to thank you for joining me again this week and I'll see you next week. Cheers.